Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 77 of the Young Kings Wrestling Podcast featuring the Sovereign Soundboard. As always, you can find us on most platforms streaming podcasts, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and iHeartRadio, among others. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave us a review. Links to all the platforms are available at ykwrestling.com. Also on ykwrestling.com, we have NWO-inspired Young Kings Wrestling Black Lives Matter shirts, as you see here. Uh, we got shirts, tanks, hoodies, onesies, pretty much anything. Shout out to What a Maneuver. Uh, we also have those in breast cancer awareness styles as well. Head over to the link tree at ykwrestling.com. Click the What a Maneuver link. Proceeds from these shirts will be deposited into a fund. And those funds go to legitimate causes benefiting Black Lives Matter. I do my research. I'm the one that handles it. I, I am trustworthy. Uh, just putting that out there for y'all. I know some people will be on the fence about donating money. So I understand uh, these shirts are going to that, to that cause as well. Uh, I am the Thespian T.C. Fontaine, joined by the Nature Boy, Reek Flair, new nickname alert, Reek Havoc. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, uh, join in the conversation on social media using the hashtag YK Wrestling. Instagram, we have some words, but uh, we have company today, so I'm going to reserve those words <laughs> for another time, because because you, yep. you, you guys, Instagram deleted our page, y'all, so... Yeah. We, we, we were up almost 10K. In the middle of Black History Month. In the middle of Black History Month, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the middle of Black History Month, as, as I, I, my last post was about Black wrestling history, one of my favorite Blackest moments that I've seen on a wrestling television show. And that was it. That was our swan song. Maybe, maybe not. We'll get the page back. I'm not sure. But we'll see. But I, I will have some choice words from Mr. Zuckerberg. <laughs> when we don't have company. <laughs> uh, we are joined today by writer and filmmaker, uh, the director and producer of the documentary, Lady Wrestler, The Amazing Untold Story of African-American Women in the Ring. Uh, that documentary is now available on Prime Video. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Bournet. Welcome, Chris, how are you doing this afternoon? Great, great. TC and Reek, th thanks for having me on. I love that intro music. I feel like I'm like a gladiator going into the stadium. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's that Power Rangers Dragon Zord. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Big Power Rangers fans over here, man. So, uh, Chris, let's, let's get right sure. into it. Uh, you're a man of many hats. Uh, you're, you're a writer. Of, now you, you dipped into the, the filmmaking uh, you, you wrote for a newspaper, is my understanding. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what led you to taking this path as a career. Yeah, so I, I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, where these African-American women wrestling legends, where they trained, where most of them lived, and where uh, a man named Billy Wolf, a promoter, um, he, he started women's wrestling, the modern day women's wrestling right here in Columbus. So as you said, most of my career has been in print journalism. I went to Ohio State, I have an English degree. I worked at a couple of newspapers, including the Call and Post newspaper, which is Ohio's like big major uh, African-American newspaper, the local daily newspaper, Columbus Dispatch, I've written for them as well as um, the local magazine, Columbus Monthly. And so I found out about these wrestling women at, when I was working as a reporter back in the mid 2000s. Uh, an African-American man named Terry Anderson, who works in public relations, I would call him periodically for story ideas. And he kept telling me, he said, Chris, you should interview this woman who grew up in my, that I grew up with in my neighborhood. She was this, she was some kind of wrestler or bodybuilder, and she has all these interesting stories. You should, inter you should interview her sometime. So that turned out to be Ethel Johnson, who was one of the first Black women in pro wrestling. She started in the 1950s. And I interviewed her for the Columbus Dispatch back in 2005, the end of 2005. The story came out in March of 2006 when Arnold Schwarzenegger holds a fitness classic every year in Columbus. Arnold Schwarzenegger's people saw the article. They called me and they said they wanted to give Ethel a Lifetime Achievement Award. So by the time I had interviewed Ethel, she was in her 70s. She was a retired grandmother. She really didn't like the limelight. And she was really 
doing me a favor by talking to me. So when I called, I actually called her daughter, Shelly, who was my main contact. And, and I could already tell by Shelly's voice when, when I talked to Shelly and, and mentioned the idea of Arnold Schwarzenegger giving her mother a Lifetime Achievement Award that uh, Ethel was not going to be too into it, unfortunately. And sure enough, Shelly called me back and said, yeah, I ran it by mom. And she said, tell him things, but no things. But that gave me an idea. I, I, I thought to myself, I said, if someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, an international movie star, and you know, a fitness icon. He he won one of his first bodybuilding titles in Columbus, which is why he continues to come back here every year. I said there has to be more to this story than one, you know, one newspaper article. So I had in my research for the newspaper article, I had seen this documentary called Lipstick and Dynamite. And uh, it chronicled women of Ethel's era in the 1950s and 60s, wrestlers from that era, but they didn't mention the black women. I don't think it was an intentional oversight. I think it was more just the filmmaker interviewed the women that she had access to. And it briefly mentioned Ethel's older sister, Babs, who was actually the first one recruited by Billy Wolf, but it had no mention of Ethel or their younger sister, Marva, who was also a, a wrestler. So I just thought if anyone deserves their own documentary, it's Ethel and, her, and women like her. So I asked Ethel if she would be willing to be interviewed on camera. And to my surprise, she said yes. So that's, that's how the documentary started. Awesome, awesome. So over the course of the research that you did, uh, yeah. what was the, you know, the, the main reason that you feel that, you know, these stories about these women hadn't been told before? Part of it was because of the women themselves. Um, they were like, as I said, Ethel was very uh, almost shy outside the ring. You know, a lot of a lot of athletes and entertainers like have their you know, their stage persona and their offstage persona. And her offstage persona was very, very reserved. She didn't even help tell her children when she was wrestling that she was a wrestler. Her daughter Shelly tells a story in the documentary that she found out her mom was a wrestler when she and some of her friends were playing when they were kids in front of the TV set. And one of her friends, Shelly's friend was like, isn't that your mom on TV? <laughs> it was a wrestling match on TV. So that's how she found out her mom was a wrestler. So part of it was the women themselves Part of it was just like they felt this stigma about doing something that was unconventional for women at the time. So they didn't want to talk about it when they because they a lot of them were wives and mothers and you know they, they didn't want to be looked at as like you're you know you're an oddity. And then part of it is just the women went through a lot of experiences with racism and sexism and they didn't want to go back into that painful past and talk about it. And then part of it, quite frankly, is you know, women's stories and black women's stories especially are not well appreciated by the larger society. Uh, a commentator that I have in the documentary is named Jeff Lean, a Washington Post reporter who wrote a book about Mildred Burke, who was actually the first uh, women's world champion who was married to Billy Wolf. Mildred Burke was a white woman, but um, Jeff Lean says, you know, Mildred Burke hasn't even gotten the due that she deserves. She was a white woman. She was married to the man who started, started it all. So if she hasn't gotten her due, just think about the black women, how they have just been overlooked. So it was a combination of the women themselves being reluctant to talk about their, you know, their past in the wrestling industry and the wrestling industry itself kind of, you know, Jeff Lynn calls it um, amnesia about this chapter of history. Yeah, I think it, it's also, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, with the fabulous Moolah Absolutely. And, and her story. Uh, uh, and it, if, if you want to know deeply, uh, more deeply into what really went on, uh, she, she, they have a documentary on Vice. Yeah. Uh, called Dark Side of the Ring with Fabulous Moolah, and it kind of details yeah. just the, the role she played in kind of erasing that history as well. Right. Okay. And I have to say that the Dark Side of the Ring, that was that explored some things that the women that I interviewed did not, um, either they didn't experience or they didn't talk about it. Like Dark Side of the Ring basically says, excuse my French, that Moolah was pimping out the you know women she, yeah. the wrestler <laughs> she represented. Sweet Georgia Brown, another famous black wrestler from the 60s, her children say that, you know, our mom would go off on these wrestling trips and then several months later, she'd be pregnant. So it was basically, you know, a front for sex trafficking or, you know, they were being coerced, the women were being coerced into doing that, you know, having sex with promoters or whatever it was to, to make money. Now, I don't, I don't have any knowledge about that. The women that I interviewed did not mention that. And, um, to my knowledge, they didn't experience that because they were under Billy Wolf. They weren't under Moolah's management. 
but that was something that obviously went on, you know, in, in different parts of the wrestling industry. What was the, the most interesting thing that you learned over this time and what, what captured you the most about, you know, these interviews and things that you learned about these women? Yeah, I would say the fact that they didn't tell their, the, the fact that Ethel didn't tell her family that she was a wrestler, I thought was just really, really unusual. And I compare her to Wonder Woman in the sense that, yes, she's like a superhero. She seemed, you know, back in the day when she was really, really popular, she seemed to have superhuman strength and superhuman stamina. But also, you know, like how Wonder Woman has a double identity. She has Diana Prince, who no one knows as Wonder Woman. And doesn't know that she goes around doing these heroic deeds that and Ethel's life was almost I mean was almost like a comic book where she had her everyday persona where no one in her everyday life including her family knew she was a wrestler and then she would go all around the world doing these amazing things I mean and these women were not just popular here in the Midwest or in the United States they went all over the world Ethel um, trained and wrestled a lot in Canada you know Montreal was a big wrestling hub for a while she had a, a ring name in Latin America, Rita Valdez. So she went to Cuba before the embargo. She and her sisters wrestled in Mexico. They went to Australia. They went to Japan. But these women were international sensations. And it just blew my mind. But here I am, African-American, grew up in the Black community. You know, my first couple of jobs were at Black newspapers. And I didn't know about these women until someone who grew up with the women actually said, hey, why don't you interview one of these women? So that, that really just blew my mind. For real, man, and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna steal this question from Rick, but uh, what's what's the primary thing that you want people to take away uh, from this documentary after watching it? I, I mainly want people to take away that these women really, really contribute to history. And they didn't set out to be civil, right, civil rights pioneers, but they ended up in a lot of ways helping some of the goals of the civil rights movement. For example, Ethel tells this story where she got tired of go, going, when she would go wrestle in the South, she got tired of the promoters saying that she had to do one match for the white audience and a separate match for the black audience because they weren't gonna let the fans of different races intermingle. She got physically tired of doing two matches every time she had to go wrestle in like a city, like let's just say Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And she told the, she finally got up, fed up one day and told the promoter, she said, look, if you're not gonna let the black fans in, at the same show as the white fans, you're giving this excuse of you don't have separate bathroom facilities and that's why you're not gonna let the black people in. She was like, I'm just, I'm just leaving. I'm not gonna wrestle today. And he was, and he called her bluff and said, okay, well then don't wrestle. So she yeah, wasn't even booked him. No, which he left, he left, she yeah. left, took, you know, forfeited her money. And she said, that's what stopped a lot of the promoters from doing these segregated shows is they knew they couldn't book Ethel and excuse me, her sisters and women like her if, they were gonna have segregated audiences. So the promoters, their hand was forced because they knew these women were, would draw a big gate that they had to let the they had to let the um, the audiences intermingle, but they would still find ways to segregate them, like, you know, blacks in the balcony and whites on the main floor, or you know, blacks on this side of the auditorium and whites on this side. So even though they technically let them in, they would still find ways to segregate the audiences. Yeah, it's, it's probably the least surprising thing ever to know about that. Uh, I think yeah. we're all aware of how American history is. And so it was like that in all different sectors. But I think we kind of still, it, it hasn't really been that much better in our industry for unless about 20 something years. So, right. And that's, that's really crazy to think about. Like you look at the biggest promotion, WWE, just had their first African born champion two years ago. Like right, the yeah. first African born main champion two years ago, and so it's it, it's it's changing a little bit. And then I, I would like to segue into my next question: that this current era probably is the best representation we have for Black wrestlers ever. I would say yeah. mainstream and indies, uh, especially looking at WWE, just all the talent they have that's featured on a weekly basis, winning championships. I think it's it looks good on the outside looking in. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure if you're too familiar with a lot of the wrestlers out there nowadays, but who's someone that uh, has stood out to you uh, who, who best carries and represents what the, the pioneering lady wrestlers in this documentary brought to the table? Yeah, like in the documentary, I've mentioned Alicia Fox and then people, you know, have mentioned to me like, you know, that I should try to touch base with, you know, Naomi and Be Bianca and Sasha and, you know, 
black women wrestlers like that just so they they're aware of these women who came before them because i could my honest opinion is i i don't know if any of the modern day black women wrestlers even know who an ethel johnson or a babs wingo or a you know ramona isbell i don't even know that they know who these pioneers are because a lot of you know because as we discussed their history is so underground but i think someone who i think is really a rising star who actually reminds me a lot of Ethel Johnson is an independent wrestler out of DC named Trisha Dora. Yes, she actually yes. just came to Ohio recently for a match that they had specifically for Black History Month. There was it was all black wrestlers. And I think she really has the talent and the ambition to to really be a, a star. So I, I I really am a fan of Trisha Dora. Yeah, Tr Trisha Dora just last weekend had a 60-minute match uh, against wow. a man, and she won it. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she wrestled a man when she was here in Columbus as well. So, yeah, she, she's really talented. And uh, she, she does have that uh, the, the Pan-African World Diaspora Championship that only uh, Black wrestlers can compete for. So that's pretty dope, too. She just hit a year as champion recently as well. So yeah. she's doing her thing. I think she she needs to be in in one of the big three companies for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's she's really amazing. Indeed, man. Uh, and where where can where can people get in touch with you online or on social media? Yeah, so um, so they can go to the website ladywrestlermovie.com. They can you know find the documentary on Amazon Prime. Uh, they can find me on Twitter. And I still have my Instagram page as far as I know, right, <laughs> right as we speak. Uh, so he it's, has it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Chris Bornet writer. So Chris Bornet, then writer like, you know, write, writer like an author. Um, and then uh, there's a Lady Wrestler Facebook page. So in any one of those platforms, they can, they can find me on and they can find Lady Wrestler. I got, I got to I got to say this too really quick. Uh, I absolutely uh, appreciate the, 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 that you made this project and that you got it out because yes. you know uh, this was introduced to you know, us just recently. You know, TC brought it up, uh, making the post, and as we like you said, we tweeted this out, and so many people across the industry. I mean, you know, Nia Jax currently wrestling, uh, Tamina, you know, Hurricane from WWE, and all, across Jacqueline, all you know, Jacqueline, the Jacqueline. first women's champion in WWE, and right commented on it which i thought was and I, i'm looking like she hasn't heard about these women man. I right think crazy. yeah w women who are in the industry for so long women that we've seen prominently featured and even today it's like they didn't even know about any of this stuff it was like you said you growing up in this town and you didn't even know it's like i think that, that this that impact and it's, it's only growing you know as the, the, the film's coming out now so i mean i absolutely appreciate that especially here in black history month where we're spotlighting Black history within wrestling, and particularly on our show, on our channel. So, I mean, this this was really great, and you know, I mean, I I'm expecting to see a lot more uh, about it going forward. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you all having me on, and and really, ultimately, what I would like to see happen. I mean, the doc documentary is just one piece of it. I would really like to see these women honored in a more formal way, like halls of fame, and then also just here in Ohio, I would love to see. First of all, in Columbus, I would love to see a street named after Ethel since she was really like the top black star of her time. Uh, I would like to see them added to, we have an um, African-American walk of fame in the um, historic black part of town in front of a historic theater called the Lincoln Theater. I would like to see her name added to that. I would like to see, we have a statue of Arnold Schwarzenegger in downtown Columbus. Arnold is great, he's done a lot for the city, but he doesn't live here. These women that lived here and raised their families here, they need some kind of formal recognition. So that's that's my next push is to push for some kind of formal recognition by the by the city and the state and by all these wrestling halls of fame. I agree. And I, just looking at the way the WWE probably has the biggest, most recognizable hall of fame, they they don't really mention these women at all either. I, I came across uh, a gallery on WWE's website last week. Uh, they, pu they published maybe about five years ago. Um, it's a bunch of it's, uh, highlighting the, the black women in WCW, WWE, and they have one picture of Marvis Scott at the okay. end. It's kind of like slapped at the end, but that's, right, that's right. really the only mention I've ever seen them say about any of these women before. And I think you guys have the, the biggest platform. They should really go for it. And if I have to see another black history vignette, 
watching <laughs> WWE television with just Martin Luther King as if that's right. the only black historical figure. I'm gonna lose my mind. Like right, <laughs> oh, right, because because there were not just women but men too. You know, Bobo Brazil, Bobo um, Brazil, one of the first, Bear Cat one of the Wright. First, pardon, Bear Cat Wright is another one. Yeah, yeah. Ernie Ladd. I mean, there's there's a lot of wrestlers, black wrestlers, who made who made history and broke barriers. I mean, it's you know, all respect to Dr. Martin Luther King, but you know, let let's spotlight some of the people whose names aren't always championed the way they should be. Right. It, it, it's lazy because it's like it's very that, that's, lazy. That's your fallback. That's your that's your go to every single right. time, and it's year right. after year. Like and there, it's there's always no, the same incentive. three quotes from MLK that they always push. It's, like, it's much more than this. But I feel like it's just it, like Reek said, it, it's lazy, it's surface level, because it, it just makes it look like okay, we we did just enough, leave us alone. Yeah, it's it's like it's like checking off the diversity box, and then yeah. then we're forgotten about for another year. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree. So I think uh, it's something we 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 all should should work towards doing, and I think uh, the lady wrestler doc this this interview, all the other I, I noticed uh, on your YouTube channel. Uh, you have uh, the Lady Wrestler podcast. Yeah, that's just like a l limited series podcast where I just go into some of the stories that I wasn't able to include in the documentary. Like I interviewed Valerie Hawes, the daughter of Lula Mae Provo, another one of the first Black women wrestlers. And I actually tried to interview Lula Mae while she, when she was still alive um, back in the mid 2000s. And she she just refused. And Valerie goes into the fact that her mother her mother was also a lot like Ethel where she did not talk about her wrestling career when she was outside of the ring and wanted to keep it that way. So I'm trying to like uncover a lot of the stories that I want, because I have people, I, I have a lot of the women's children um, contacting me and saying, hey, you know, I would love for my mom's story to be highlighted. So there are many, many chapters to this story and Lady Wrestler just documents, just like, like you said, just four of the women mainly. So there, there's so, some of the women are, Kathleen Wembley is still living. Uh, there's there's other women who are still living. Uh, Ramona Isbell, who I interviewed the documentary, she's still living. So some of these women are able to tell their own story if they if they'd be willing to. And that's amazing. And I think it it also highlights just how how recent a lot of this is. And I think it's right. It's it's, it's shameful. <laughs> it's yeah, absolutely it is. shameful. Yeah, we think of Black history as happening like you know fifty and sixty years ago, and yeah, these women were popular that long ago, but a lot of them are still alive and well and, you know, would, would appreciate being recognized and honored. Let's, let's, let's do our part, Reek. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's do our part, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you're already doing your part. I appreciate you having me on and bringing awareness to the documentary. So I hope more people get to see it and I hope more people get to find out about these women and the, the contributions they made. It's, it's a great it's a great documentary uh, on Prime Video, as we stated, uh, $1.99. So I'm, I'm sure you got two dollars in your bank account. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't tweet us at YK Wrestling and I will, <laughs> I will personally send you two dollars to go and, and take a look at Cash this amazing out. piece yeah. of work. <laughs> and it, and it, it is it's, it's very good content. I'm on like the last 20 minutes of it. I've been watching okay. it overnight at work and this morning. So. Yeah, I, if you did, if you can, please definitely give this a watch, even if just for the historical context of it. If you're not a wrestling fan, it's just learning something about this. It's just black history, so. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. And then, you know, Women's History Month is coming up next March. So if you want to do your part for black history and women's history and just sports history and American history in general, I think I think these women's stories are pretty fascinating. It's not, it's not about me. It's about these women and the contributions they made and the fact that they've just been you know, the Washington Post called them hidden figures of wrestling. That's exactly what they are. Yeah, I, I agree. It. I agree. Yeah, they, on the head. Just hot. We need to highlight them more. Absolutely. That's, that's all it is. Uh, thank you, Chris, uh, for joining us, man. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anytime. I'm, I'm happy to. Thank you just for for, yeah. for the work you did. Like, I know I, I'm a, I, I've been making films myself so I know the the work that goes into it especially like a documentary you said you started the research for it back in in 05 you initially interviewed Ethel Johnson so you've been yeah. working on this for a long time and and it just recently came out a few years ago so I uh, appreciate as Rick said we appreciate the work you, you put in for this especially not being a wrestling fan just to just to still want to 
have something, tackle something yeah. different, something you don't know about. I think is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think the thing is, is like, I think anyone, whether they're a wrestling fan or not, can look at these women's stories and say, well, this was a part of history, whether, whether you enjoy watching wrestling or not. I think you can appreciate the fact that these women played a role in history. I agree, man. Chris Bourdain, check out the Lady Wrestler documentary, y'all. We are out of here. Go. Go. It was close enough, Reed. <laughs> okay. We'll do better. <laughs>